Now, so we let's say we have a purely resistive branch, pure resistance, right? Branch. Now, <coughs> this is the resistance R, and say there is a sinusoidal t current flowing through it, I equal to I naught sine omega t. Right? The potential that drops across this would be at any given instant IR, IR <coughs> which is I naught R sin omega t, that is V, right. The phasor for the current is I naught by root 2 like this along the zero phase line. The phasor for the voltage is I naught right this is the peak voltage I naught R is a peak voltage so let me call it V naught sin omega t where V naught is I naught R V naught is I naught R so V naught by root 2 is the phasor for the voltage and do you realize we then say current and voltages are in phase with each other in a pure resistance along a pure resistance current and voltage are in phase with each other current and voltage are in phase with each other. In phase, in a, re in a pure resistance. Hmm. See, there is a time varying current through this resistance. V at any given instant would be I at that instant into R. But what is I? I is I naught sin omega t na, I naught sin omega t. So this is, and I naught r is some V naught, the peak value of the voltage. So V is V naught sin omega t, where V naught is the peak voltage, peak peak current. So very clearly, what is the phase of for this? I naught by root 2 along the zero phase line. What is the phase of for this? V naught by root 2 along the zero phase line. And do you see that the current and voltages are in phase with each other? So in a resistance, current and voltages will always be in phase with each other, right? Now, <coughs> and obviously, what is the power factor for such a circuit? One, right. Power factor is going to be one. Why? Because phi is 0, cos phi is 1. Phi is 0, cos phi is 1. Power factor is 1 for such a circuit. Hmm? <coughs> and what would be the average power over a full cycle? The average power over a full cycle is going to be V naught by root 2 into I naught by root 2 into cos phi which is 1. V naught I naught by 2 is going to be the average power in a full cycle. Hmm? <coughs> so that's a purely resistive branch. That's a purely resistive branch. Now, can I wipe this off? Hmm? <coughs> Suppose there is a pure inductor. So why I say a pure inductor means it has no resistance. It has no resistance. And when I why I say it's a pure resistance? Because there is no inductance I am assuming. See actually realistically I can never have a pure resistance. You know there will always be a coil associated with it. There will be coiled in a certain, there will be a magnetic field associated with it. So it will also have self inductance. It will also have self inductance. So it's ideal to imagine that there is going to be a pure resistance and there is going to be a pure inductance. It's an ideal situation. I can't have a pure inductor ever. There will always be resistance in its loop, right? So now in any case, let me look at a pure inductor L. 
obviously it's characterized by this property L right <coughs> this is the inductor say this is the inductor L hmm? and I apply to this inductor L a time varying current I equal to I naught sin omega t is the current that I apply to this. Hmm? Then the drop that happens in an inductor, the drop V, potential drop D, V that happens in an inductor from the point current enters to the point where current leaves is going to be given by L D I D T, isn't it? L D I D T. L D I D T. Right? Hmm? <coughs> which is L, if I differentiate this with respect to time, I naught omega cos omega t, right, hmm? <laughs> which is I naught into omega L cos omega t, I can write as sin omega t plus pi by 2, that's the voltage variation. Yes or no? Hmm? I naught is the peak value of the current. I naught into omega L is the peak value of the voltage. Is the peak value of the voltage. Right? <coughs> and now let me draw a phasor diagram for this. So if current is represented along the zero phase line, I RMS is I naught by root 2. So the phasor for the current is I RMS along the zero phase line. Right? Do you realize voltage is 90 degrees ahead of current? Voltage is 90 degrees ahead of current. Right? So V RMS is like this. What is I RMS by the way? I RMS is I naught by root 2. What is V RMS? I naught omega L by root 2. That's V RMS. And do you see that this is, is this a leading circuit or a lagging circuit? It's a lagging. Because current lags in voltage, uh, current lags in phase compared to voltage. By what amount? By 90 degrees. Do you see that V RMS and I RMS are in quadrature? They are in quadrature? It's a wattless current. We know that an inductor is a wattless element. It does not consume power. It is not eating a power, right? An inductor element does not eat a power. A resistor eats a power. It dissipates power, right? It consumes power. An inductor element does not consume power. It's a wattless current. Do you see that? It's a wattless current. <coughs> now, V RMS is I RMS into omega L hmm. now for a given V RMS if omega L increases then the current decreases yes or no if for a given V RMS if you increase omega L then current decreases so in a certain sense, loosely speaking, this omega L is a quantity that is opposing current. It's something like what resistance was. It's something like what resistance was. But now in a new context, the context of an inductance, we don't call it a resistance. We call it a reactance, a reactance. We call it, in fact, this omega L is called inductive reactance. Inductive reactance. Reactance, XL, we normally designated by XL, inductive reactance. Yes. See, for a given VRMS, if by some means I increase omega L, if by some means I increase omega L, then the current decreases, right? So that means this is current averse. If you increase this, 
it depletes the current right so it, it's something like what resistance was in a purely resistive circuit but it's not resistance but it's still opposition to current we call it a reactance we call it a reactance since it involves an inductor we call it an inductive reactance hmm? so vrms the drop the rms voltage across an inductor will always be given by i rms into xl into xl the commonality it has with resistances it, this is also ohms because see it's v by i it's still ohms xl is still measured in ohms that means radians per second into henry will be ohms radians per second into henry will be ohms yes or no hmm? so it's inductive reactance it's inductive reactance right it's a and in this case in a pure inductor no power is consumed v and i phases are perpendicular to each other it's a wattless current it's a wattless current right hmm? <coughs> let's look at a more real situation where the inductor actually has resistance where the inductor actually has resistance right hmm? <coughs> can i wipe this off so in a pure resistance voltage and currents will be in phase with each other in a pure inductor voltage will always be 90 degrees ahead of current it's a lagging circuit because current lags right and it's a wattless current because they are in quadrature right hmm? and we've learned another similar entity like resistance which is inductive reactance which is omega l right so you know l is an inductance which is a property of that element that i'm connecting and i can vary this omega is related to the source unlike resistance which is purely the element this is not just purely the element omega is the source of current the source of voltage you know that gives 50 hertz omega will be 2 pi into 50 you don't have handle over that we have 50 hertz in indian supplies and 60 hertz in united states for example right so 60 into 2 pi is omega for the US, 50 into 2 pi is the omega in Indian conditions. That's how it is generated. It is generated at, so when they say a source has frequency 50 hertz, that means its polarities changes 50 times every second. The polarity changes 50 times every second. That's what it means, right? Can I wipe this off? Hmm? Now, let's look at a more real situation where the inductor has a resistance. So, we'll talk of a LR circuit. We'll talk of a LR circuit. Do you know of a place where a LR combination is used? You know, it's used in a choke. Have you heard of what a choke is? Yeah. Choke. A choke is really a LR circuit. You know? Okay. <coughs> so, you know, if it was a pure resistance, if it was a pure resistance, the current and voltages would be in phase with each other, right? If it was a pure resistance, if it was a pure inductance, VRMS would be in quadrature with I RMS current and voltages would be in quadrature obviously now what I am going to expect out of a combination of a resistance and this is like you know a pure resistance would want to shift V RMS in phase a pure inductance would want to keep it in quadrature with IRMS but if both are there then you would expect we'll, this is qualitatively speaking if both are there you know this guy trying to put it in quadrature this guy trying to put it in phase if they are simultaneously present you would expect the following IRMS and I expect VRMS to be something like this then 
part of it would be along IRMS, part of it would be in quadrature with IRMS. This is what I expect, but let's look at it mathematically. Let's see what actually transpires. You realize if both resistance and inductance were simultaneously present, I expect VRMS to be ahead of IRMS by some angle phi, which is not 90 degrees and which is not zero, right? Let's see how it happens. Can I wipe this off? <coughs> So far, so good, right? <coughs> so, this is a real inductor. It has some resistance and it has, it has a pure resistance, it has a pure inductance. Pure resistance and it has a pure inductance, that's a real inductor, right? And I now subject it to a current. I now subject it to a sinusoidal source. I equal to I naught sine omega t. Right? Hmm? <coughs> there is going to be a drop across the resistance. And there is going to be a drop across the inductance. There is going to be a drop across the resistance and there is going to be a drop across the inductance constituting a total drop across this composite entity. Right? Hmm? <coughs> What's the drop across the resistance? The drop across the resistance is simply IR. That's a drop across the resistance at any given instant of time. Right? <coughs> so, which is like I naught R sin omega t. I naught R sin omega t, right? <coughs> What's the drop across the inductance? It's going to be L di dt. That's going to be L di dt, right? <coughs> Which is L I naught omega cos omega t. <coughs> Which is like I naught omega L is XL. Omega L is XL, the inductive reactance, right? XL into sine omega t plus pi by 2, right? Yes or no? Hmm? What is VRMS? I naught XL by root 2. I naught XL by root 2 is VRMS <coughs> for inductance. And what's V RMS for the resistance? I naught R by root 2, right? <coughs> now, now, realistically, again, you know, this will give you an idea why phases become applicable, you know. Essentially, the net voltage across this whole thing, V is the total voltage drop across the two elements. That's going to be Vr plus Vl, that's going to be Vr plus Vl, hmm? which is what? Which is I naught R sin omega t plus XL cos omega t. Isn't it? XL is omega L inductive reactance right now a sin theta plus b cos theta we've dealt with this in the past we've dealt with this in the past root a square plus b squared sin omega t plus theta kind of a thing isn't it huh so this is i naught root r squared plus xl squared into sin omega t plus phi do you recall this? A sin theta plus B cos theta is root A square plus B squared sin theta plus phi kind of a thing. Hmm? Where? What is phi? Phi is such that tan phi is going to be XL by R by R which is like omega L by R. That's the net voltage across this. That's the net voltage across this. Right? <coughs> Right? 
now do you see that from this what is vrms this by root 2 is going to be vrms for the circuit right this by root 2 is going to be vrms for the circuit rms is i naught by root 2 root r squared plus xl squared i naught by root 2 is i rms Excel square? Yes or no? Hmm? <coughs> now, the phase of for current was I RMS like this. Yes or no? Phase of was for current was I RMS like this. Right? I equal to I naught sin omega. T. The phase of for the net voltage is going to be phi units ahead of the current isn't it it's phi units ahead of the current the voltage is phi units ahead of the current do you see that so the net vrms in the circuit is across both the elements vrms is going to be this angle is going to be phi yes or no Yes or no? Hmm? Now, now, <coughs> can I wipe this off? Hmm? It's like, it's as if, it's as if, you know, I looked at the inductor element and I looked at the resistive element separately, VL and VR, right? VL would be I naught by root 2 omega L, right? So that's omega L into I RMS, right? So I had like a voltage drop across the resistance, which is in phase, right? Voltage drop across the resistance was in phase with the zero phase line across the resistance, right? So across the resistance, what was it? It was say I naught by root 2 into R right so i rms into r that was across the resistance just the resistance alone across the resistance alone this is what it was i rms into r this this number right hmm? now across the inductor alone it's 90 degrees ahead of this see across this inductor this part It's 90 degrees ahead of the voltage drop across the resistance. And what is it? This is the RMS value of this would be I naught by root 2 into XL. Would be the RMS value, I naught by root 2 into XL. But I naught by root 2 is I RMS. So I RMS into XL is the drop across the inductor. XL is the drop across the inductor. Do you see that? I hope I'm not confusing you. Hmm? So this is the drop across the resistance. RMS drop. This is the RMS drop across the inductance. If I add these two, if I add these two, vectorially, if I add these two across the resistance and across the inductance, if I add these two, what will this give me? This will give me I RMS into root XL squared plus R squared. Root this squared plus this squared would be I RMS into XL. Yes or no? Which was actually that V RMS? V RMS was what? V RMS? Yes. V RMS was this. V RMS was this. For the entire circuit. For the entire circuit. For both the elements R and XL. Right? So do you see that? How do I obtain... How do I obtain the VRMS for the composite structure? I draw the phasor diagram for the voltage across the resistance. I draw the phasor for the voltage across the inductance. And I vectorially add them. And I vectorially add them. Then this resultant will give me what? 
VRMS for the composite. VRMS for the composite. Yes or no? Hena? Hmm? Also, <coughs> for this for this full branch, for this full branch, <coughs> VRMS is the total drop. IRMS is the current through that branch. That means this must be this must be something like an opposition to the current for this composite structure. This root R square plus XL square must be like an opposition to the composite structure. Right. Now, this I have already used inductive reactance. This, this time when both are present, I don't call it a reactance. I call it an impedance. I call it an impedance. I call it an impedance root r square plus xl square where xl is omega l xl is omega l it's called an impedance it's called an impedance root r square plus xl square hmm? so vrms is IRMS into impedance. VRMS is IRMS into impedance. If there is a resistance and an inductance, what's the impedance? The impedance is going to be root R square plus XL squared. Where what is XL? Omega L. XL is omega L. That's the impedance offered to this composite structure by this combination. So much. Hmm? Now <coughs> Wipe this off. <coughs> Look at this. This was like a I RMS into R, the drop across the resistance. And V RMS, I RMS into XL was the drop across the inductance, right? And the resultant was the total drop across the combination. This was V RMS. Right. Hmm? And we got V RMS as what? V RMS was I RMS into root r square plus xl square this is my impedance i said this is my impedance okay clear now we draw sometimes what's called and called the impedance diagram and this angle this angle was phi this angle was phi right and cos phi would be the power factor. Cos phi would be the power factor. And tan phi, like I said, was omega L by R. Tan phi was omega L by R. Right? Now what I conceive is the following. So far so good, right? All of you are in sync with this. Not out of phase. Now we will draw what is called an impedance diagram. We will draw what is an impedance diagram. This is the voltage diagram, current diagram, current phases, voltage phases. We will draw an impedance diagram. An impedance diagram. Hmm? <coughs> tan phi, this is tan phi. Tan phi is omega. The impedance diagram is like I take R here, R. And I take omega L there. And I take omega L, XL. I forget I, I RMS, I RMS. I take R and omega L, XL. This vector then is the impedance vector. This vector then is the impedance vector. See, mod of Z is going to be what? Root R square plus? 
xl squared root r square plus xl squared is the impedance vector and do you realize this angle phi will be the same as this angle phi because here tan phi was omega l by r here also tan phi would be omega l by r tan phi would be omega l by so it's the same phi it's the same phi so the impedance vector and this is also the direction of v the voltage vector this is also the direction of the voltage vector do you see that the voltage vector also is in this direction this is the direction of the current vector this is the direction of the voltage vector right and this phi which the impedance vector makes will give me the angle between the voltage vector and the current vector right now what i do is <coughs> since now i'm talking of a vector i'm talking of vector as in a complex number as in a complex number i, I call this my x direction for example i call this as my x direction i call this the y direction then this vector e so this is the real number line this is the imaginary number line right then if you haven't forgotten the complex numbers that was taught to you the vector z this vector z from triangle law will be r plus this vector is jxl will be jxl isn't it r plus jxl the vector z is going to be r plus jxl which is like r plus j omega l is the impedance vector R plus J omega L is the impedance vector, <coughs> and the magnitude of this vector is the magnitude of the impedance. Magnitude of this vector is what? Root R square plus omega squared L squared. That's the magnitude of the impedance vector, right? And this vector makes. phi such that tan phi is omega l by r right the important thing again is that the component of the impedance vector the component of the impedance vector along the zero phase line along the zero phase line will give me the pure resistance of the circuit z cos phi is going to give me r mod z cos phi is going to give me r Yes or no? Do you see that mod z? This length is mod z. This is the vector z, right? Mod z cos phi is going to give me the resistance R, and mod z sine phi is going to give me XL. So component of the impedance vector, component of the impedance vector along the zero phase line is giving me R. its component in quadrature is giving me omega l so this is my impedance vector z r plus z omega l the angle phi between v rms and i rms is the same as the angle that z makes with the i rms vector will with the i rms vector yes or no clear hmm now i'm assuming you are understanding all of this right na huh? <coughs> now if i have v given by v rms angle phi i given by i rms angle 0 i along the zero phase line right z would be mod z angle phi what it means is the impedance vector 
we don't talk of uh, the rms value of the impedance though we will talk of rms value of only current and voltages this complex number z has a magnitude mod z which is the magnitude of the impedance offered in the circuit and this phi is the angle between the phasors of vrms and irms right in fact when i write v as iz in a vector notation v as iz in vector notation this is in vector notation i am writing right so it's as if where v and i are rms values v and i are rms values z is the vector z is the vector z r plus j omega l, r plus j omega l So this is I, which has an RMS value, E power, or rather angle zero, and Z is like mod Z angle phi. This is what we write in common parlance. Hmm? Also notice that. If I know V RMS, please, these are some simple observations that I want you to make. If this is V RMS, then the component of V RMS along the zero phase line, component of V R will give me the drop across the resistance. The component of V RMS along the zero phase line, along the zero phase line, will give me drop drop across the resistance. And in this direction, it will give me drop across the inductance. Obviously, RMS drops, RMS drops, right? this is just notation i want you to understand that henceforth you know i am going to look at impedance not just in terms of its magnitude which is root r square plus xl square but also in terms of a vector the impedance vector whose magnitude is this but it makes an angle phi such that tan phi is omega l by r with the zero phase line that's how i want you to understand the whole thing hmm? Hmm? <coughs> Can I wipe this off? <coughs> See, if this was my V RMS. And phi was my power factor, cos phi was my power factor, then and if I RMS was the current, I RMS was the current in the circuit, if I RMS was the current in the circuit, how does one compute I RMS? One computes I RMS by V RMS divided by impedance, magnitude of impedance magnitude of impedance that's how one computes i rms i rms is v rms by magnitude of impedance root r square plus omega square l square right <coughs> then the power consumed by the circuit the power consumed by the circuit is always going to be i squared rms into the resistance r that's going to be the power consumed by the circuit. Why? Because there will be no power consumed by its quadrature. By the inductor element, there will be no power consumed. Power consumed would be I squared RMS into the resistance also. And how does one compute I RMS? V RMS divided by magnitude of the impedance. Magnitude of the impedance. Where Z is the vector R plus J omega L. R plus J omega L. component of vrms in this direction will give me drop across the resistance component of vrms in this direction will give me the drop across the inductance and vrms by magnitude of impedance will give me irms and the power associated with the circuit would be i squared r, r rms r to r i squared rms into r that's a power associated with the circuit 
Hmm? Makes sense. So this is a lagging circuit, right? A RL circuit is a lagging circuit. It lags, current lags behind the voltage by an angle phi such that tan phi is omega L by R, right? Now, so if I have looked at an inductor element, if I have looked at a resistive element, I must look at a capacitor. I must also look at a capacitor element. Can I wipe this off? So, a capacitor, C, this is a purely capacitive circuit, a purely capacitive circuit and I connect it to a alternating source, I connect it to an alternating source, say this source is V equal to V naught sin omega t is the source of voltage. So, V equal to V naught sin omega t is the source of voltage. Hmm? At a given instant, the charge on this is Q, the charge on this is minus Q. Of course, this polarity changes a certain number of times in a given second, this polarity will also change. right? Can I say Q is C V, Q at any given instant of time would be C into V at that instant of time, you know, which is C into V naught sin omega t, that is Q. Hmm? The current I is going to be dQ dt, which is omega c v naught into cos omega t, right? This can be written as sin omega t plus pi by 2, that is current as a function of time. Yes or no? Do you see that current in this case is 90 degrees ahead of voltage? It is a leading circuit. It is a leading circuit. Current is 90 degrees ahead of voltage. Current is 90 degrees ahead of voltage. Right? Now, this is the peak value of the voltage omega c. Uh, this is the peak value of the current omega c into v naught is the peak value of the current. So, this by root 2 would give me I RMS, this by root 2 will give me I RMS, yes or no? So, I RMS is going to be omega C V naught by root 2, yes or no? But what is V naught by root 2? V RMS, V naught by root 2 is V RMS. V RMS, <coughs> that means V RMS across the capacitor is going to be 1 by omega C I RMS, hmm? now look for a given V RMS if I increase this, then this will decrease, then this will decrease. So, this is opposing current for a given voltage, this is opposing current, right? I call this a capacitive reactance, 1 by omega C, I call it a capacitive reactance. For a given V RMS, 
if I increase this, then the current will decrease. If I increase 1 by omega c, then the current will decrease. So, it is opposing current. I call it 1 by omega c, I refer to as the capacitive reactance. Xc, which is 1 by omega c, is capacitive reactance. So, across a capacitor, the voltage drop is going to be IRMS into XC. Obviously, what would be the units of XC? Ohms only, ohms only, right? So, that is capacitive reactance, that is capacitive reactance. Hmm? <coughs> and Realize current is 90 degrees ahead of voltage, right? Voltage is along, let us say, the zero phase line. V naught sin omega t is along the zero phase line. So, V RMS, which is V naught by ro root 2, that is along the zero phase line, right? Current is 90 degrees ahead of it. That means current is like this I RMS is 90 degrees ahead of voltage. I RMS is 90 degrees ahead of voltage. Yes or no? Hmm? <coughs> Sounds good. Hmm? Or sometimes we could have said, so in a pure capacitor, in a pure capacitor, the important thing is current leads current leads in a pure capacitor. So, which means if I, if somebody gave me, if somebody gave me, the summary is, if somebody gave me current along the zero phase line, I equal to I naught sin omega t, right? Then voltage would be 90 degrees behind, minus pi by 2 would be the voltage, right? I could have had current like this, then the voltage would have been like this, right? current if that is along the zero phase line I RMS, then this is my voltage V RMS, this is my voltage which is V RMS, 90 degrees behind the current and X C which is capacitive reactance, which is capacitive reactance is 1 by omega C. Obviously, now I would look at a combination of resistance and capacitance. Resistance and capacitance, right? I mean, if in this circuit, you know, there was also a resistance, resistance would want to bring V RMS in phase with I RMS. Resistance would want to bring V RMS in phase with I RMS, but obviously cannot, but it will try its best. The, in, the capacitor would want to hold it in quadrature 90 degrees behind current and resistance would want to bring V RMS in phase with I RMS. So, the net effect would be a V RMS like this. I expect a V RMS like this. If there is a resistance along with the capacitance, then I would expect V RMS to be something like this. Let us check that out. Sounds good? Hmm? So, I have a resistance and a capacitance. I have a resistance and a capacitance. Right? There is a voltage drop across the resistance which will be in phase with the current. There is a voltage drop across the capacitance. There is a voltage drop across the capacitance which would be behind which would be behind the current in the circuit, right? 
So the phasor diagram for this is the phasor diagram for this is this is the zero phase line. This is the zero phase line. Hmm? I must have voltage across. This is the RMS value of the voltage across the resistance. This is the RMS value of the voltage across the resistance, which would be in phase with the current, which would be in phase with the current, right? And there is going to be a voltage drop across the capacitance, which would be 90 degrees behind current, which would be 90 degrees behind current, right? Voltage drop across the resistance, voltage drop across the resistance is going to be what? I RMS into R. That's going to be the voltage drop across the resistance. The voltage drop across the capacitance is going to be what? I RMS XC, which is 1 by omega C. Capacitive reactance, right? The total voltage drop across this, which is total V RMS would then be the resultant of these two yes. like before. Yes. Hmm? Hmm? Resultant of these two phases will give me the net voltage, right? RMS voltage, which is what we expected. This is V RMS, which is root V R squared plus V C squared, which is root V R squared plus V C squared. That is V RMS, which as you can see if I say root this squared plus this squared, which is like I RMS into root R squared plus X C squared. X C is 1 by omega C. X C is 1 by omega C. And voltage lags behind in current by an angle phi such that tan phi is going to be <coughs> this number Vc by Vr, Vc by Vr, right? If I do a Vc by Vr, I RMS will get cancelled. So that is like a Xc by R is 1 by omega CR. Hmm. For this circuit, V RMS is I RMS into this number, right? This is opposing current. This number is opposing current, right? And this is called impedance. This is called impedance for the circuit. V is I into impedance. V is I into impedance. Root R square plus X E squared is the impedance. Right? <coughs> Clear? So it is like if I have to get an impedance for a RC circuit. So this is the magnitude of the impedance. This is the if Z is the impedance, then the magnitude of the impedance is root R square plus XC square. XC is 1 by omega C, right? <coughs> so, how does one get root R square plus XC squared? I have R along this line, say, and I have XC along this line, 90 degrees like this. XC, which is 1 by omega C. And this would vector then would be my impedance vector. This vector then would be my impedance vector. And it will make an angle phi with the zero phase line. It will make the same angle phi with the zero phase line as was made by the voltage vector, the RMS vector, right? So, Z and V RMS are in sync. Z and V RMS are in sync. So, can I not say that tan phi same tan phi I get 
1 by omega c by r 1 by omega c r as you would expect hmm? this vector this vector in complex number notation is written as what r is uh, z is r minus j by omega c this is if that was plus j this would be minus j so minus j by omega c and mod of z so this is r minus j x c r minus j x c and mod of z is going to be root r square plus x c square and the vector z makes the same angle phi as is made by the voltage vector across the entire circuit if the z vector was like this the v vector across the two elements put together will also be like this what would be the power factor of the circuit cos phi so if you know vrms and you know this you can compute irms isn't it irms as you can see irms as you can see is vrms by magnitude of the impedance magnitude of the impedance magnitude of this vector root r square plus xc squared right that's irms so there is an r and there is a xc hey xc is in quadrature with the current see vc voltage across the capacitor is in quadrature with the current it will be a wattless this element the capacitor element does not consume energy right and the drop across the capacitor alone will be perpendicular to the drop across the resistance it will not consume power so what will consume power in this case the resistance the power consumed by the resistance is the power consumed by the circuit which would be i square rms into the resistance r into the resistance r that's the power consumed by the circuit if i know the impedance vector if this is my impedance vector then its component along the zero phase line will give me the resistance no will give me the resistance and in in a perpendicular direction it will give me capacitive reactance capacitive reactance 1 by omega c yes or no hmm? so far so good hmm? if we can have a circuit with r a circuit with l a circuit with rl a circuit with capacitor a circuit with resistance and capacitor then we can also have a circuit with r l and c right all put together but the ideas remain the same can i wipe it off so far so good right <coughs> it will not offer so much of impedance <coughs> see if the impedance vector is below the zero phase line that means below the current line then it's a leading circuit if the impedance vector is above it it's a lag so right so i could have had say r c l xc like i said is omega c x 1 uh, by omega c xl inductive reactances omega l right let me draw a impedance diagram for this let me draw an impedance diagram for this let's say the zero phase line is the line of current say say this is my zero phase line also the line of current huh? <coughs> then this will be along the line of current i'm drawing the impedance diagram 
so there is r like this which is along the line of current right along the zero phase line line of current then there is inductive reactance which would be 90 degrees ahead of this omega l right this is the zero phase line also the line of current and then there is capacity so this is my xl and then i have an xc which would be like this 1 by omega c hmm? now this is my impedance diagram so my impedance vector z is going to be r plus j omega l minus 1 by omega c yes or no that's my impedance vector yes or no right now if omega l is more than 1 by omega c if omega l is more than 1 by omega c then the difference between these two would be upwards and the net impedance would be above the current line it's going to be a lagging circuit right but if 1 by omega c is more than omega l if 1 by omega c is more than 1 more than omega l then we'll have r and a net downward so the net impedance would be like this current would be leading voltage current would be leading voltage yes or no and the angle that the net impedance vector makes with the zero phase line is phi and cos phi is the power factor how do you obtain the average power vrms into irms into cos phi right in this case z is this right what is the magnitude of the impedance magnitude of the impedance is root r squared plus omega l minus 1 by omega c now there is also a possibility of omega l being equal to 1 by omega c that means there is an inductance there is a capacitance but the these two cancel each other and then it will become a purely resistive circuit and then the vrms and irms will be in phase phi will be 0 cos phi will be 1 power factor would be 1 that's a possibility right omega l could be equal to 1 by omega c right it will be a purely resistive circuit net impedance would be the resistance only and currents and voltages would be in phase with each other then if that happens right and vrms like before will be irms into mod z right hmm right do you see that <coughs> if this is increased for a given vrms then irms will decrease current will decrease right hmm? right what's the smallest value of this r the smallest value of this is r that means when this becomes zero irms becomes maximum when this becomes zero impedance will be min minimum impedance will be minimum and irms will be maximum that means maximum current is obtained when this number is zero when this number is zero maximum current is obtained right that means current would be maximum is maximum when omega l minus 1 by omega c becomes 0 that means when the frequency of the circuit angular frequency of the source is 1 by root lc 1 by root lc and when this happens we say it's a state of resonance we say it's a state of resonance and this frequency is called a resonant frequency this frequency is called a resonant frequency for the circuit and this happens the condition is referred to as resonance hmm. in fact if omega is varied current will vary let me just give you how it varies 
current I with omega, this is how it varies. At omega not equal to 1 by root LC, it will become a maximum. At this is how it varies. At omega equal to 1 by root LC, it becomes a maximum. This is how we can, if we plot, current will vary with omega. This is how current will vary with omega. And at this value of omega, current will be maximum. That's a resonant frequency. That's a resonant frequency. You might want. No, constant. It's not constant. Bell shaped. It will not dip. In fact, let me tell you, <coughs> can I wipe this off? So, all along, you know, I have taken these elements in series only. I have taken these elements in series. Huh? But I can have any combination of elements. I can have any combination of elements. They could be in parallel or series parallel combination, whatever. I could have had say a resistance 5 ohms, an inductor 1 Henry, I could have re a resistance 3 ohms, a capacitor C equal to say 2 microfarad and I could subject this to a sinusoidal variation. I could subject this to a sinusoidal variation. There could be a sinusoidal source here, right? Uh, say I could have had V equal to say V naught sin omega t. Again, like I like I have suggested a little while ago, this behaves like an impedance, the upper branch behaves like an impedance Z1 equal to and say I have omega here. So, this is L 5 plus J omega L is the impedance of this branch, right? R plus J omega L, the impedance of this branch Z2 is 3 minus j by omega c, 1 by omega c, 3 minus j by omega c. So, I have two impedances, complex numbers in a certain sense z1 and z2 in parallel. I have two impedances z1 and z2 in parallel like this. I can apply the parallel law that I apply to resistances. This can be replaced by one single Z. This can be replaced by one single Z. Let me call it Z, the impedance Z across the source such that Z will be Z1, Z2 by Z1 plus Z2. Magnitude. No, this is magnitude. Hai. Vector, vector is this. Because r equal to r1 r2 by r1 plus r2. See z1 is this vector. It is not the magnitude. I apply this 5 plus j omega l into 3 minus j by omega c divided by z1 plus z2. What is z1 plus z2? 8 plus j into omega l minus 1 by omega c. Right? This is product and ratio of complex numbers, right? Eventually, it could be written as some A plus JB. It could, right? I can simplify this as A plus JB kind of a thing, isn't it? Huh? And if this B is positive, it will be resistance and inductance kind of a thing. This is, this will be my, like my resistance and this would be omega L, the inductance. If this number is negative, then the magnitude of this number would be 1 by omega c and this would be the resistance. 
this would be the x component of the impedance which is the resistance and if b is positive it will give me xl if b is negative it will give me xc yes or no that's the impedance in the circuit and vrms can always be written as i rms into magnitude of the impedance root a square plus b square you now have the luxury and flexibility to play with impedances you know how to construct an impedance r plus j omega l minus 1 by omega c or whatever combination is required and then if they are in series z1 plus z2 plus z3 if they are in parallel 1 by z would be 1 by z1 plus 1 by z2 plus 1 by zn and eventually this will simplify to some a plus jb only a will give me what the resistance the, that's a component of z along the zero phase line and if b positive it's going to give me omega l if b is negative it will give me 1 by omega c you know xc this is how it happens do you understand everything that i have said right 